would love you. Hey, you need hands, it's you. Go on, what George. What are you doing, Mr. Armand? Oh, it's the new unisex display model, made in Japan. Do you like that? It's a fella. Yeah. Like that. It's a bird. <laughs> it looks a bit odd. You all right? I've got my rackle whilst mixed up with me twiggies. <laughs> you are awful. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Grace. Oh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Everybody's not here, Mr. Grace. Uh, Mr. Grace, is, Mr. Grace is stopping at every floor to welcome people back from their holidays. Oh, did you and your secretary have a nice time on your yacht, Mr. Grace? No, no, it was all up and down, up and down. <laughs> Rough weather. I didn't like to be anything else, did it? <laughs> his money and my body. <laughs> I think I'd rather have his money. Yeah. Morning, Mr. Harmon. Morning, Mr. Rumbold. Did you and Mrs. Rumbold have a nice holiday? Oh, yes, I can. Yes, we went to the Coconut Islands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to your head? I, uh, <clears throat> I got hit by a coconut. <laughs> Oh, I could get this model yeah. off the floor until it's dressed, Mr. Harmon. The customers will be coming in before long. Yeah, you can't go. Hold my hand, I'm a stranger in paradise. Come on, go. <laughs> ah, Captain Peacock. We're all uh, cutting it rather fine today. What's this? Oh, it's from your doctor. <laughs> this is to certify that S. Peacock is suffering from a throat condition acquired during a yodeling holiday in Switzerland. <laughs> I have prescribed for him Laringwex pills, a gargle, and nodule gone throat spray. Yes, although fit for work, he should use his voice as little as possible. Dear me. <laughs> Won't the customers think it rather strange if you don't speak to them? I find it even more strange if I do speak to them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Peacock. You must admit it's an extraordinary effect. If I use this throat spray, it's simply a cure. What happened to your head? Coconut fell on it. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> well, that's very funny. Uh, when did you think you'll be better? Well, in about a week, sir. Uh, unhappily, there are one or two uh, unfortunate side effects. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I shall! Bye! <laughs> like that. Oh, never mind, I'll get it. Uh. Oh. <laughs> sorry. Uh, well, we'll, we'll send out for some more. <laughs> How long does this stuff last? Not very long. What's happened to your heart? My what? Your heart, your head. What's the matter with your voice? Oh, well, I spent my holiday taking elocution and deportment lessons. Good morning, Mr. Rumbold. <laughs> morning, uh, Miss Brahms. I must say, it's a remarkable transformation. Yes, well, I heard my voice on one of their tapes, and I must say, it didn't half sound dead common. <laughs> What on earth is the matter with you, Mr. Lucas? I burnt my feet in Skegness. In Skegness? Well, there was this female acrobat, you see, and she took me back to her flat. <laughs> she was just showing me how to juggle with a couple of grapefruit and a cucumber standing on my head when her father came in. Well, what's this got to do with burnt feet? Well, he's a fire eater on the pier. <laughs> he took one swig of paraffin from his hip flask, flicked his ronson, breathed out, and it was towering inferno with me going head first down the fire escape. <laughs> if he hadn't been short of breath coming up the stairs, I wouldn't be able to sit down either. <laughs> It's a pity you didn't singe your hair. It looks dreadful. Yes. I'll get it cut right away, Mr. Uh, Rumble. No, you will not, Mr. Mm. Lucas. You will do it in your coffee break. <laughs> I trust you're not catching a cold, Mr. Lucas. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. It's very unhealthy putting your trousers on after they've been slung off the end of the jetty. Mr. <laughs> 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 I've never seen such a whopping conk. <laughs> Before anybody else makes any funny cracks, this is a plastic cover. My nose caught a touch of the sun on the Costa Blanca, and this ear contains soothing ointment, which must be kept on as long as possible. Now, I wouldn't take it off, Mrs. Slocum. It balances the rest of your face. <laughs> <laughs> when I want advice from you, I'll ask for it. Samson. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the nose, I trust you had an enjoyable holiday? I did not. You know the reputation these Spaniards have for bottom pinching and jumping on defenceless ladies at night on the beach. Was it all true? No, none of it. <laughs> As you can see, I've come straight from the airport. 
<laughs> and you are very nearly late, Mr. Humphreys. Well, you're lucky to have me here at all. I got a customs officer that was working to room. What are you looking for, I said? We're on the trail of an international gang of rhinoceros horn smugglers, he said. <laughs> well, I'm not hiding one where you're looking, I said. <laughs> the hold all isn't big enough. Anyway, I've only been to Guernsey. <laughs> you can't serve customers dressed like that. I'm surprised they let him into Guernsey dressed like that. <laughs> well, I've got my other clothes in here. In a couple of ticks, I'll be back to my normal self. <laughs> as near as I can be. <laughs> Captain Peacock, how nice to see you. Did you have a pleasant holiday? <laughs> going to take the mickey. I'm sorry, I am. Don't, don't go, Mr. Humphreys. I have a small announcement to make. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Rumble. Before you start spouting, I've got Captain Peacock throat spray from the chemist counter. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> he got a throat infection during a yodeling holiday. <laughs> Has that uh, made it all right? Yes, I thank you, sir, for the time being. <laughs> I caught it during the Alpine Horn competition. Unfortunately, my team were all using the same horn, and I was in last, and in the excitement, I forgot to wipe the end. <laughs> well, that can happen when you're in a hurry. <laughs> now, as I was saying, I uh, have a small announcement to make. Yeah. <clears throat> now, as you know, Mr. Tebbs is taking over as head of the gentleman's department. And uh, I must say, Mr. Humphreys was considered for the position, but the board felt that he was too young. I'm disappointed, but flattered. <laughs> uh, Mr. Tebbs, are you there? I'm here, Mr. Rumble, waiting and eager. This is Mr. Tebbs. Good morning. Good morning. I think he's known to most of you. Ten years in bathroom fittings, three in footwear, almost entirely responsible for modernizing greeting cards and novelties, and finally, four years in bedding. Uh, you left out soft furnishings. Have I? Yes, that is between bathroom fittings and footwear. How long were you there? Eighteen months. Uh, Mr. Tebbs was also 18 months in soft furnishings. Yes, I resigned when they introduced bean bags. Quite right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, with a record like that, I'm sure we're all honoured to have him with us. Now, this is Mr. Humphreys, your senior assistant. I'm sure if there's anything you can't find, he will find it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and if Mr. Humphreys can't find it, he won't be worth looking for. <laughs> That's Mr. Lucas. Now, uh, Mrs. Slocum, I expect you already know. We have not actually met, but we will move to each other. Move? When we see each other across the store, we... we move. I always thought you had a stiff neck. <laughs> uh, this is Miss Brahms, ladies' junior. Delighted to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. So, <laughs> Captain Peacock, of course, I know of old. He's quite a legend of British Brothers. Very nice to have you on our floor, Classical. Thank you, Stephen. What a stick of steam, so already. <laughs> ah, there's the bell. Please, everybody, and good luck, Mr. Tibbs. Thank you. This way, Mr. Tibbs. I'm sure you'll find everything runs quite smoothly. If there are any little changes you'd like to make, don't hesitate to say so. <laughs> oh, may I present you with a new tape? Thank you. I usually work at this end, and young Mr. Lucas looks after that end. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, I'm afraid that won't do at all. I will work at that end, and Mr. Lucas will work on this side of you. There. That's much better. <laughs> you see, it's only a little detail, but very important. We must look out for the little things. Big things take care of themselves. <laughs> Isn't that the way of the world? <laughs> Your nose is all swelled, Mrs. Slocum. Well, I bust the blister on a sangria goblet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a customer. You deal with her while I make repairs. Good morning. Good morning, madam. I'm looking for a suit to wear mainly for time. Oh, yes, we've a flagely nice one in brown for a round and a bite, 40 pounds. How dare you try to imitate me, you cheeky little bounder! <laughs> I think you'd better drop the posh accent during working hours. Well, how did she know I want one of her? <laughs> because the quality do wear their bosoms itched up round their ear holes. <laughs> well, in that case, you should be top of next year's honours list. <laughs> Get a brush and sweep out the fitting rooms. They're very mucky. And it's the last time I discuss my blister with you on a friendly level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's much better, Mr. Humphreys. Quite dapper. Did you get that suit off, Peg? Well, yes and no. My mother shortened the sleeves, and I got a friend who's a wizard with gussets. <laughs> well, contrast to Mr. Lucas, that handkerchief is not up to my standard. Does the boy know how to flute? Well, he has been shown, Mr. Tebbs, but he's very forgetful. <laughs> Let us all do it together. These handkerchiefs on the counter. Grasp the centre with a forefinger and thumb. Lift. Prepare to flute. Flute. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Humphrey, I 
think we'll find a little starch in the water. We'll put that way. It's nice to know there's a cure. <laughs> then, reverse, insert, and flare. Now, that's how I want to see them every morning. Just so. <laughs> well, I must actually sold seven simulated antique salad flush toilet sweets in one day. They still talk about it in bathroom fittings. <laughs> I had no idea it was so exciting down there, did you, Mr. Murphy? <laughs> I think it's the way Mr. Taft tells it. Mm. Ah, I'm glad you're all here. I've uh, just come from the boardroom. Well, I was attending to give an important meeting. Yes, I thought there was something up, so we had you towed in the hole, put back in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've probably all read that it's to be a royal visit to the borough. Now, it appears that they're planning a walkabout on Fair Street. Now, this will take the royal party right past Grace Brothers' main entrance. No. What a horror. Just think of it, they'll be walking past our entrance. I can just imagine it, can't you? There they are, walking down the street, when suddenly the Queen nudges Philip. Do you know where we are, she says? No, he says, surprise me. This is Grace Brothers' department store, where rumour has it one man sold seven lavatories in one day. <laughs> How the pop in and give him the award for industry? <laughs> I find these young people with their communist attitudes very tiresome. Well, Mr Lucas may well joke, but if the schedule permits, the royal party may very well come into Grace Brothers for a little informal shopping. Oh! Well, of course, we have had a queen here before. <laughs> what exactly are you suggesting, Captain Peacock? Queen Mary accompanied King George V as part of the Jubilee celebrations. Mm. Did he buy anything? His Majesty did express interest in a Homburg, and uh, naturally it was given to him. What, without paying? It's protocol, Miss Brown. If they express interest in something, it is automatically given hey, to they them. They might have Charles with them. He might express an interest in Miss Brown's, and we'll have to send her up to Sandringham. <laughs> Commoners, Miss Brahms, but not dead common commoners. <laughs> You're being right rotten to me today. Well, you was very rude concerning my bust, and I'm very sensitive about it. It's a very ticklish subject, isn't it, Mrs? <laughs> You're a very naughty boy. Do you think the royal party might actually come into our department? Well, uh, our orders are to be prepared. You see, so young Mr Grace wants us to be acquainted with the, with the correct procedure. I therefore have to ask you all if you will volunteer to come in after hours. Speaking for the ladies, it will be an honour, and I am unanimous in that. I agree entirely. And speaking on behalf of the men, we are ready and willing. <laughs> that just leaves you, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum's right. You are a naughty boy. <laughs> uh, Mr. Tebb? Yes. Has your department rehearsed what you intend to do? Well, I hear that our Mr. Humphreys has a rare talent in these matters, so I've rather left everything to him. Mr. Humphreys. Yes. Young Mr. Grace will bring the royal couple up in the royal lift, and I thought it'd be rather nice when they arrive at the department if, they, if we give them a polite and loyal round of applause, like this. Oh, yes, it's charming. I like what I'm hearing. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, don't answer that. That's the signal that they're on their way up. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum and Captain Peacock have consented to stand in for the royal couple. Places, everybody. Yes. <clears throat> Hang on. <laughs> oh. No, stop. No, Mr. Harmon, this red carpet will have to be at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, all right, if you say so. <laughs> Nash, if that had been the real thing, you'd be in the Tower of London. Just leave it where it is for now. You can't come up in the same lift as them. Oh, I see. I'm rubbish, aren't I? Let me tell you, it's people like me that stand and cheer the wave flag as they go up past in their coach. Well, you're not in the coach with them, though, no. are you? <laughs> right, we'll carry on. Now, then. Uh, start again, start again. There you are, you see, I don't even know how that's kind of work the lift. But you know, Mr. Grace, he's gone off with the Queen. Well, I'm sorry, Your Majesty, my elbow must have fallen back. Well, accidents will happen. It's better if we start again inside the lift. Yes, but hurry up. All of you, stand by for the applause. Are the royal couple ready? Oh, get on with it. <laughs> right. This way, Forget the sword, just a 
do the bell. <laughs> by appointment. <laughs> Shall we start again? No, carry on. I should like to introduce you to the gentleman of the gentleman's department. Mr. Grace, you can't do it from up there. Well, someone will have to get me down then. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, the Queen doesn't dash upstairs to bring Mr. Grace. I must stand next to you, Prince Consort. Mr. Rumbold, will you help? By the time he gets down, they'll be back at the palace. <laughs> If you stayed in your office and we could tell you all about it when it was over. No, I'm going to be here. Give me a chair. Mr. Grace, you cannot sit down in the presence of the mark. Well, it's either that or fall down. <laughs> it's quite all right. We understand. Hey, on, Mr. Grace. Now, then, say your words. What were they? Well, you wrote them down. Oh, yes. So I did. I don't know what oh, come here. Here we are. <laughs> And that's your gas bill. <laughs> Fifi the fan, ring top bell and go straight up to the third floor. <laughs> no wonder you couldn't get down those stairs. <laughs> I haven't got my reading glasses. After me, it gives me great pleasure. It gives me great pleasure. To welcome you. To welcome you. To Grace Brothers Gents. To Grace Brothers Gents. Department. Department. <laughs> Well, we'll just have to hang around for a bit. <laughs> now, we'll take it from where the royal couple approach the gents' department. Right, hang on, let me get to my position. Right, go. Stop. Wait. Men's well. <laughs> oh, hello, Mother. No, love, no, I can't talk now, because I'm rehearsing for the Queen's visit. No, not to your place, dear. No, here. Uh, Grace Brothers. Grace Brothers, where I work. The vicar's with you. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, I can't help it if his church roof's leaking. Look, I'll tell you what, under my mattress there's an old football sock full of pound notes. No, don't give him the money, give him the sock. Come there, roll it up and bung it in the roof of the church and pray for a drought. <laughs> now, where were we? My husband and I was about to approach the gentleman's department and could you please get a move on? These shoes are playing up with my boy here. <laughs> Lucas, you're going too far. All you've got to do is bow. Your Majesty, it is a great privilege and an honour for a humble scholar such as ours. Mr. Rumbo, if you can't bow with that plaster on your head, it's macabre. <laughs> do I have to make some sort of gesture of respect? Well, if you're going to bow, we'll have to cover it up. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Control yourself, my dear. Now, carry on. <laughs> Here, follow me. <laughs> Let's be serious. This is a moment you're going to remember for the rest of your lives. <laughs> now, you will start from the foot of the stairs. Go back a bit. Now, Mr. Grace. Mr. Grace. The Queen's here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just a minute. Let me get in position. Right, Mr. Grace. Now, do you speak? Something, something, something. <laughs> something, something. Something. <laughs> Your Majesty, it's a great honor on the front. <laughs> I won't tell it, I won't tell it. You must do it properly. <laughs> Mrs. Sir, now you're the Queen and you're him, so let's have a bit of loyal decorum. Now come on, to the top of the stairs again. <laughs> Lovely. Now then, dignity. A disdainful smile. <laughs> Chest out. Not you, Mrs. Slocum. <laughs> glide. Glide. Well, I don't want to interrupt, but I lock in the store. You've got 30 seconds to get out. <laughs> <laughs> the royal party is already in the bar. You ladies from display should have finished by now. Unfortunately, the people what used to wear it was traditionally smaller. <laughs> I don't think the royal party want to see your combinations, Mr. Harmon. 
Haven't you got any longer socks? Uh, no, Mr. Rumble. But if it pleases you, I'll go over them with black hair or so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you look very smart, Captain Peacock. Thank you, sir. I hope the Queen don't mind the smell of mothballs. <laughs> <laughs> Where is everybody? We're free. <laughs> and ready for inspection. Ah, very nice, Percival. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Humphreys, is it necessary for you to stand like that? Like what, Captain Peacock? Like that? Yes, it is. Why, Mr. Humphreys? Because I've got a big moth hole just there. <laughs> I got through all those balls, I shall never know. <laughs> Probably bat moth. <laughs> <laughs> so it is necessary for me to stand like this. Mr. Humphreys, won't you find that a bit of a strain? Funnily enough, it feels quite natural. <laughs> uh, ladies, are you ready? <laughs> oh, but, Ram, that's, uh, that's quite eye-catching. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, uh, where's Mrs. Slocum? Oh, she's just fixing her cool knit. Mick <laughs> Captain Peacock, I hope you don't mind the sash. Only I didn't want to be confused with my junior. Don't worry, Mrs. Slocum, there's no danger of that. <laughs> How near are they? Oh, it's from the BBC. I've, I've got me tranny here. I'll, I'll plug it in. Hang on. Blimey, no. Well, I never. Don't that make you feel proud? What's happening? Pardon? What's happening? <laughs> the Queen has never looked more radiant. She's gracefully attired in a pink floral chiffon with hat made of large, bold swirls of a similar material. Ooh, and a simple row of pearls. And a rock on her finger worth four million quid. <laughs> Where are they now? Uh, just past the bus stop. Hang on, the Prince Philip's paused. He's shaking hands with an Arab. <laughs> and they're looking in the window of Lally and Willits. I hope they're not going to that cheap stall. Why not? They've got a special offer on lawnmowers. <laughs> <laughs> they won't go to my office. We should be able to see them from there, from the window. Oh, oh, oh I'm excited! Don't you as well. Oh, there she is! Hello! Oh, Miss Brown's controlling herself. Oh, the swells on a half hour bold, aren't they? Why does a prince always have his hands clasped behind his back? Well, perhaps he's got a moth hole as well. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that charming? Look, a little girl is giving her a bouquet. And now the Queen has given it to Philip. Oh, Philip's handed it to the Mayor. The Mayor's given it to an alderman. He's given it to a policeman on an horse. Oh, yeah, and the policeman's given it to the horse. <laughs> I think the horse is enjoying it more than anybody. <laughs> oh, let's have the commentary. Yeah. And on this lovely sunny day, the Royal Party pause once again in the High Street to shake hands with the crowd. Then giving a cheery wave, and led by the Queen, they cross the road heading towards the entrance of Grace Brothers Department Store. I wonder if they'll go inside. They're going to come in! I know it! They're going to come in! A couple of minutes, we can all be shaking hands. Mine are shaking already. The moment they come in, back to your post. The royal party are pausing at the entrance of Grace Brothers. Uh, there seems to be a whispered conversation. They're probably wondering whether they should go in or not. Prince Philip is nodding. Look out! <laughs> Missed it by an inch. <laughs> There's obviously been a change of plan. The royal party are running to the car. <laughs> They're in the car, and the police are clearing the way through the crowd. And the car accelerates into the distance. And they're gone, leaving behind the happy, waving, cheering bystanders. <laughs>